live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2017. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to theCUBE. We are live at VMworld for our continuing coverage of the event, day two. Exciting morning, I'm Lisa Martin with my co-host Stu Miniman, and Stu and I are very excited to be joined by a CUBE alumni, Chandamoy Mandal, Director of Storage Solutions Marketing at Dell EMC. Welcome back. Glad to be here. Yeah, we had you on theCUBE a couple of times at Dell EMC World yes. in uh, just a couple of months ago. So, um, virtualization, still a mainstay of the data center, right? Some big announcements yesterday and today. Can you talk to us about some of the trends that you're seeing in the virtualization market today? Sure, so as Many organizations are going through the IT transformation. Uh, data centers are becoming even larger, running thousands of applications, many thousands of VMs, right? So what we see is as many applications run, the underlying storage load becomes like hugely random. The platform needs to be able to deliver very high performance all the time, 24-7, 365. Also, getting into the private cloud type environment, we see a lot of like VM cloning, VM deployment coming and happening in a rapid space. We also see the need of efficient copy management to prevent the VM sprawls in a very nice content efficient manner. And finally, as we are hearing at VMworld, giving access to applications and data from any device, any application, anytime, anywhere, that's becoming another aspect we are increasingly seeing across all of our customers. Yeah, you bring up a lot of really interesting points. You know, I think back, you know, the early days of virtualization, it's like, oh, we're going to give this abstraction layer and it's going to make everything really easy. Come on, invisible infrastructure, I shouldn't have to even worry about storage, right? But the reality is there's a lot of work that goes into to making sure that storage works well when we're talking virtualized environments, when we're talking cloud environments. What's that conversation you're having with customers? When they, you know, how you, I think virtualization and cloud, who is it that brings up, hey, uh, we got to make sure that storage meets our needs? Um, you know, what, what, what are some of the biggest things that you're hearing from customers and, and how are you helping to solve them? So, as you look at the customers, right, maybe like five years ago, it used to be pretty storage admin or IT admin centric conversations. Uh, we are seeing a transition into a CXO level business, solving our business challenges conversation. It's not that how much storage I need, how many copies do I need to create, but it's more along the lines of I need to bring my cloud native application faster to market. It's taking six months of development cycle. How can it bring it back to like three months? How I can hit the corner cases uh, before the customers actually run into those in my QA cycles? How I can run better analytics real time as opposed to having to wait for like 24 hours? So these are the business challenges customers are asking us to help solve, and we are kind of like evaluating where they are in their IT transformation journey, and how we can map those requirements into the underlying infrastructure that will help them get to that uh, new era of virtualization, cloud native applications, all those things. One of the things um, that Michael Dell talked about this morning on stage with Pat Gelsinger was that the data conversation is, like you were saying, it's a CXO level conversation, it's on the CEO agenda. Can you talk to us about some of the things that Dell EMC is doing at that level of customer conversation where costs are concerned? We have this exploding growth of data volume, that's not changing, centers of data, not data centers anymore. How is Dell EMC helping to position where you can work with customers on the storage element that will really help drive cost efficiencies across an entire business? So, I'll start with a solid example, right? I mean, I was working with a customer who is running like huge number of databases and to run his business, he needs to have copies for his DevOps operations, he needs to have copies for uh, his backup environment, uh, copies to run his analytics environment, and there were storage silos everywhere because 
he really was afraid of touching his production environment to meet his SLAs. Now, I'll give you an example of one of our portfolio products, uh, Dell EMC Extreme IO. In fact, we literally announced the general availability of X2 here at the EMC World. Now, this is a uh, purpose-built all-flash array that is designed to handle application level problems. So for example, it can not only provide very high performance with consistently low latency for DB workloads, but because of its intelligent in-memory content aware metadata architecture that's built for flash media, it can create copies without consuming any extra space instantly and the uh, admins, whether it's a DBA or storage admin, they can actually consolidate production workloads with non-production workloads like DevOps environments analytics, thereby hugely reducing the storage TCO of it, but then there is an added benefit to it. Say for example, the application admin needs to deploy a VM to for his latest uh, application he is developing, right? So instead of having to go to a DBA, to a storage admin, he actually can self-service with the application level plugin saying like, hey, I want to clone 10 VMs. And you know what? The DBAs are happy, the uh, storage admins are happy because they are out of that chain. Uh, they can monitor and make sure everything is running fine, but at the end of the day, the self-service is actually helping the developers bring the pro uh, product to the market in a more timely and a cost efficient manner. To so yeah, reduce TCO I, I, storage costs. Yeah, right? I actually I want, you, want you to kind of put a point on that because uh, we, we'd actually looked into, you know, when Flash came into the marketplace, it was like, oh great, we're going to improve performance, but the business outcomes, what happens to the business? And, you know, one piece you talked about, uh, the, the, you know, de dev and test environment. It used to be, you know, let's give them some old gear, they kind of work on whatever they could have, they can now increase their agility. Number one thing we hear in the keynote this morning, talked to all customers, how do I move faster? And it, giving them the tools in there, all of those copies, I'm putting them to use. I'm leveraging my data. I'm leveraging, you know, the uh, increasing the speed of my application development. And that's the you know number one thing that we hear from you know all customers is right. How can I you know not have storage be a boat anchor, but help me move my business forward? So you know, be a driver, not a cost. They you know? don't need to be in the business of like optimizing storage. It is like helping them transform the business application workflows as opposed to how do I plan for this, how do I like keep monitoring, like what do I need to do for the next upgrade, et cetera. So from a customer's perspective, can you talk to us about, to Stu's point, um, maybe one of your favorite examples of a customer who dramatically improved business outcomes, you know, reducing uh, cost of ownership, uh, getting to market with products faster, launching new products. What are some of the big business outcomes that, that you've seen through a, a great customer example? So I actually have like a couple. I'll start with one in the healthcare space. Uh, Scripps Health is a big integrated nonprofit uh, health system down in San Diego area. And they are running their electronic health record systems which are pretty vital for all the clinicians to access their patient data very quickly. Now they had multiple problems. One was how to keep up with the explosion of like all the uh, images that were getting created, like copies for their EHR systems, et cetera. And at the same time, they had to back up their data, okay? And they had to create many copies of their SQL Server environments. In fact, like they could not keep up with that and their, uh, I mean, uh, the time it was taking was getting enormous. Once they moved to this Extreme IO platform, they actually like started to see pretty much like that uh, time to create the copies reduced by like more than 80%, okay? Uh, and then they also saw the advantage of like data reduction. They are getting anywhere like four is to one to seven is to one data reduction on the storage capacity. And like with, with the help of uh, this integrated technology, now their doctors are able to see more patient in a day pretty much like saving lots of like doctor hours, okay? You can imagine they can pull back large images faster, sun off flash. 
being able to get you know um, information to patients faster and make diagnoses maybe uh, improve their ability to do that as well. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And changing the spectrum completely. I mean, I'm from the Boston area. Red Sox is my favorite <laughs> sports team down there, along with Pats. Uh, now, again, even with baseball, right? They need to run like lots of analytics. They want to have their uh, spectators in the historic Fenway Park, the latest and greatest digital experience of the games that are going on, right? And they had to run all of their business applications as well as customer facing systems on a platform that can keep up with the growth and give their latest experience. Now again, like they moved to Extrema, they're seeing a great performance, they're seeing seven is to one data efficiency. And literally like they say us, their business processes and the customer experience have changed. They don't really like need to worry about how the back end is working. They can actually focus on the strategic outcomes of baseball operations and giving the uh, viewers at Fenway the best possible IT experience through uh, you know, the mobile network, social networking, like all those things. So that's kind of like two of my favorite examples from completely different spectrums. Okay. So we're here at VMworld. Uh -huh. uh, any specific use cases that you know you're especially seeing popular, uh, you know, in, in this community, kind of as compared to uh, the kind of the general storage market? So I would say uh, one of the aspects we heard, I mean, in the keynotes, uh, any device, any application, like one cloud. For us, what we are seeing... There's actually any cloud now, right? Yeah, any cloud. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> it's pretty much the same, right? I mean, uh, it's any device, any uh, application, any uh, anywhere, anytime access. So I want to say the end user computing yeah. like is becoming very important. It was always important, but there were like storage bottlenecks, but now, with all these abstractions that are possible, the mobile device management that is coming in, uh, we see a great uptick in terms of the uh, desktop virtualization market. And again, bringing back to what we just announced, right? This Extreme IO X2 platform is exceptional for VDI uh, use cases. I mean, in our previous generation, we had 700 plus customers running 2.5 million plus virtual desktops. Now with this new platform, I mean, a single x brick which is like a small two controller 18 SSD, it can host up to 4,000 desktops. And I mean, we are seeing tremendous performance improvement, snappy desktop experience with huge data reductions. So that's one area like which we see keeping up with our uh, customer base as they're going through that IT transformation through digital transformation. So one of the things, I love that you brought up the, the Red Sox. I'm a San Francisco Giants fan, but if they if they don't make it into the wild card, which is probably not going to happen, I may I might root for the, the Red Sox. But what I love that you talked about is, you know, a baseball team is a technology company. A hospital, a university is a technology company. Presumably with a lot of legacy infrastructure that needs to be updated to modernize IT. How is now Daily MC with Extreme IO helping these companies on that, on this path to digitalization, but on this legacy kind of upgrade process. What's unique about how Dell EMC can do that leveraging Extreme IO? So for us at Dell EMC, modernizing IT infrastructure is essentially, we think based on four pillars. Uh, flash, uh, one is flash, scale out architecture, uh, cloud ready and software defined storage all backed by the world class data protection. Now, I want to take it one step back. It's not just about like Extreme IO or Extreme IO X2. It's about the power of the portfolio that we have. So customers might have legacy infrastructure both from us or from like other vendors, but we provide, we kind of like walk into their environments what we call get modern assessments. We actually run various types of uh, applications to see where their bottlenecks are, what performance do they need, and then take a portfolio approach to provide the complete solution in terms of how we can non-disruptively transform all of their workloads into a newer platform, be it based on Extreme IO or VMAX 
or Scale.io, any of those platforms, right? But the key is having the ability to non-disruptively move the legacy workloads into this uh, modern infrastructure as well as enabling them to those cloud native applications digital transformation journey. Yeah. You've mentioned cloud native applications a few times. That modernization of the applications, one of the toughest you know, journeys that we're going on. We talked about virtualizing, we talked about cloud, but the application's something that, you know, it's pretty tough to make make a change there. You know, how, how is the infrastructure enabling that, and what, what are some of the, just kind of in general, what are you hearing from customers? How are they doing along that journey? So, uh, in that space, right, we are seeing a great adoption of like the platforms that can provide 24/7, 365, like not only just uptime but great performance at a lower uh, TCO. And we are seeing adoption in terms of converged and hyper-converged and software-defined. So those are the elements that are helping the customers transform into that space. Meaning, think of it in a uh, automated self-service world where pretty much like I'm developing my applications and I click a couple of buttons and all the infrastructure get provisioned as I need and when I'm done I kind of like decommission it. So that's the ultimate nirvana of like self-service automation orchestration that the end developers can use and IT become a strategic operations as opposed to kind of like keeping the lights on and making sure we are like in the business. Excellent, well Chandamoy, we thank you so much for coming back to theCUBE and sharing what's new at Dell EMC with the different technologies and some great use cases across different companies that are tech companies at heart. Uh, we hope you enjoy the rest of the show. It was a pleasure uh, being on theCUBE. Thank you. Thank you. And we want to thank you for watching. I'm Lisa Martin with my co-host Stu Miniman. Again, we are live covering day two of VMworld 2017 from Las Vegas. Stick around, we will be right back.